explain about MySQL group replication. Uh, so agenda is I'll explain about group replication and then use cases and then summary conclusions of time. So what's group replication as Vicky was saying, a multi-master update anywhere. It's a plugin for MySQL and uh, it's automatic distributed recovery. It, is, it has conflict detection and it has a group membership concept. So what it can do for the user removes the need for handling the server failover because it's automatic now, provides fault tolerance, enables update anywhere setups, automates group reconfigurations, and provides a high available replicated database system. So we call these five masters as one group. That's what we call it as one group. That's the reason we call it as a group replication. All of them can connect to client. Uh, all clients can connect to any of the master. And uh, so the, 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 that one we call it as replication group. So how it works is, let's say, okay. so let's say this client is doing an update and another guy, and another guy is doing another update. Where A equals to one, where A equals to two. So as you can see, there are, it's not conflicting. So both of them, will go ahead and then they both of them will commit and this guy whoever is here committed it's a prepared phase that guy will send it to broadcast that particular transaction to all the rest of the servers in the group and the, it will same thing will happen to this transaction as well since they are not conflicting both of them will be committed in the group on all the mass on all the server let's take an example of where both of them are trying to update the same tuple. We have a cert certification database on all, the on all the servers with which we will see that whoever comes first into the group will win and then he will come in and the other guy will lose and then the, the transaction will be rolled back. By looking at the certification database, we will be able to identify that particular transaction is a conflicting transaction. No question. Yeah. For this certification database, is you are maintaining this certificate on some other database? No. The certification database is kind of a cache which is maintained on all the machines separately. Every main every server will have its own certification database, but all that certification database is in sync. Is that cache in memory or yes. what's it in memory? Yeah. So automatic distributed server recovery. Let's say there's five servers are in the group and the new guy is, wants to join that group. So what happens is, this guy, he'll, by setting the group name, he'll say, okay, I want to join. So one of them, let's assume that the second master will say, okay, I will donate for you. So the, there will be an async replication between the second master and the newly joining guy. And that newly joining guy will be in a recovering state because he is in the recurring state, none of the writes will go there. So he once he downloads all the data from the master two to that guy, he will say he'll join the group. So now he is he will also be in online mode. So after that particular server is turned into online, even that guy also will be able to serve the right records. So let's say um, the fifth guy is saying that I have a maintenance and then I have to go down. So what happens is, so now that guy is gone down and rest of the guys will know after five seconds that is configurable. After five seconds, all of them know that okay, there is one person left. So now the five guys will be coordinating and even though when there is a coming voting concept, only these five guys will be participating. After some time he comes, let's say after um, one hour, he comes after the maintenance. So again the same thing happens, that guy will say I want to join you, but I already have so and so transactions. So again one of them will say okay I will donate it, so that there will be an async replication between that guy and the newly joined guy. Again that guy will be there in recovering mode till he actually um, comes online with the group. So, all these things are automat automatically done inside the group replication plugin itself. 
And though it's a plugin, it's exactly like how MySQL, whatever you're doing on the MySQL, all those things can be done. So like um, InnoDB tables, or however you use the InnoDB tables on the regular server, the same thing can be done here as well. Performance schema, we do have a group replication performance schema. So there are few things that are that will give you uh, information on what is the status, how many members are there, and who is uh, um, how many transactions are happen on, happening on each server. And this group replication is fully cheated support. Um, so the full group will have one cheated. The same we name we say it as a group name. So this guy also will be generating the group name colon one and there is another transaction happening on another server but he will use the same group name. So in that way GTH will be in order and you can even have a async replication with from the outside group to a group. Conflicts will be detected here. Like you, you connected to a master one and there is something happening here that reaches to the group and if there are any conflicts happening because of other masters, that will be detected here. So those things, since it will be rolled back, those things will not enter into the group. Even the other way around is also possible. Like from the group, there is another guy who is not inside any of the group, but he doesn't want to join the group, but he wants to get all the information from that group. So you can have asynchronous group replication between one of the master from the group and to an normal uh, outside group. So there is another concept called read-only mode, which is like, if something went wrong there, uh, you, you don't want that to be uh, there on that group. So the moment we our group replication plugin detects that there is something wrong on that master, we will put that in the read-only mode. We, because the, the, re, uh, the reason we put that in the read-only mode we, there will not be any write request served on that server until the DBA solves it and then say again start group replication. We will uh, none of the write requests will be served. So here he will solve the problem whatever is happening on the master and then the same procedure like he will say the start group replication again he will go into the recovery mode. One of them will be donor, then he will be in sync with the rest of the servers. Okay and. Um, those, those uh, who are already familiar with the regular replication multi-threaded slave, which is a parallel sub supplier support, uh, applier support, which is possible even on the group replication as well. So on each server, you can even say that, okay, I want to enable parallel applier support. So by doing the same thing what you do in a regular replication, you can do it on the group replication as well. By setting parallel workers is equal to eight, and then parallel type you can mention and then preserve commit order also you can mention which preserves the same order whatever is happening on the master. So this parallel parameters are to set on the slave or on the master? In group replication there is no master or slave it just uh, everything is just one node everything is no there is no ma everything is a master. So you want to do it on one particular master you have to do these settings on master uh, on that node. And then you want to do it same thing on other node also you have to set these things on all the nodes that you wanted the best better performance in the player. Yeah, for, so for this uh, group replication all the nodes need to use that logical clock. Doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. Yeah. Okay. So till now whatever I have explained is multi master mode where everybody is ready to accept the right request. But there may be some situations where something like a DDL is happening, a DBI is doing a DDL and uh, when the DDL is happening you don't want some DMLs to happen on other machines. So for that there is a setting called single primary mode where you enable it and then say that this is a uh, uh, group replication plugin will automatically pick one of the servers from the group and then it will mark that particular server as single primary. So the, all the right requests will be going to that single primary. This is, we made it as a default mode. 
uh, I will be covering, uh, there are few limitations with the multi-master mode, that's the reason we made this as a single primary mode. So after you install it, if you want, uh, if you want the multi-master to be enabled, you have to change it. The default is uh, single primary. So uh, as I said, automatically one of them will be picked, which is, and rest of the slaves. Now the, we call it as slave now in this in this case because only one of them is a master, and rest of them are slave. All the servers will know that who is the primary guy. Let's say that particular primary is gone. Group replication plugin will automatically detect that, and then it will promote one of the other ser slave servers in the group to a primary. This is also automatically done by the plugin itself. And if, if if you want to know who is the primary at this moment, there is a query from the performance schema table. You can execute this, which will tell you, okay, this is the primary that is acting currently. Um, so we have a built-in communication engine inside. Um, so that you don't need a third-party software and then also, since we have implemented our own communication engine, which is broadcasting it to all the transaction events to all the servers, even it can be used easily on the easily on the cloud itself because it doesn't no no network multicast support is required because we have an internal communication system. Okay. These are the requirements uh, that you have to uh, have. These, for example, in ODB. The tables we sub group replication support is only in ODB, and you have a you should have a primary key on all the tables. It requires a global transaction identifier to be turned on, and it requires binary lock to be turned on. It requires row format to be turned on, and your uh, application should be op optimistic because there could be that there are some transactions that will be rolled back even after prepared. So the application that you are planning to execute on the group replication has to be optimistic. And as Ricky said, we have a limitation currently that only nine servers can be added in one group. Uh, currently, uh, these are the four things that are forbidden we are not supporting now. Uh, is serializable when you enable the multi-master. Cascading foreign keys is not supported. Transaction save points is not supported and bin log, binary log events checksum is not supported. Foreign keys are not supported. Cascading foreign keys are not supported. So does that mean uh, things like on delete cascade, on update cascade ever? On update cascade, um, there is one more clause which says that cascading. So those things are not supported. And for this nine node limitation in a group, so, uh, I mean, for example, can is this possible? We have a two groups, and uh, there is an application. We are working on that. So, in the coming releases, it it would be possible, but, but we are working on that. And the warning is concurrent DDLs. You have to be a little careful when you are doing the concurrent DDLs on multi-master. In single primary, there is no problem at all. In use cases. Elastic replication when you want to, when, when, when the application is something like the nodes are increasing, you want to increase the loads or you want to decrease the load, so you can easily do it by just saying that, okay, well, I want to join the group. So that is possible. And um, something like you can have a high available charts. Uh, so each group is one chart, and then you can have multiple charts, and each chart group can be a group replication. And another one is, another use case is a simple asynchronous replication master slave doesn't have all these automatic things like uh, setting a primary and rest of the things slave and if primary is goes down, automatically making uh, a, a one of the slave to all those automation is not there. You have to use the tools like MySQL failure. But if you set up the group replication with a single primary mode, it is equal to master slave replication with all these automatic features. So the summary is, it's cloud friendly because we have our internal uh, communication system and it's well integrated with the rest of the MySQL server and uh, uh, it's operation friendly. Um, 
Yeah, so it's going, and there is one more thing that we are working on is on top of the group replication, there is a MySQL InnoDB cluster, which we are working on, which is, which uses the group replication and it makes more things automatic. Something like a, a MySQL router um, and MySQL shell will be talking to the group replication and all this automation will be, is possible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> if I were to write a client application, uh, so do I specify a single IP address or how do I connect? How does it select which uh, database server I connect to? Um, with the uh, InnoDB cluster, it's possible that you directly talk to only one person and then it will automatically see which which server is possible, which server it is possible, and it will send it. If you are talking to the group replication, you have the clients will be connecting to separate servers. Okay, so they'll just choose one of any of them, yes. and then if you're directly direct talking to the group replication. Okay, so then um, let's say if it's a stateless uh, those PHP applications that uh, each request they always do a connection before closing. Uh, is there any performance impact for the one? For the clients connecting and then reconnecting. Closing and then reconnecting. Uh, yeah, connecting and then closing. That um, means each time this they, they connect, does it take time to find the even the primary master mode? Does it take time to find the primary master? I'm this? not sure about that. Maybe not even cluster might be having Ricky can answer. Okay, the, just now to, to answer to your first question. Right? Mm -hmm. Um it's uh, we we have our we have a software load balancer called MySQL Router. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this MySQL Router is um, is basically is able to load balance if you run if you run on multi multi primary mode, it be able to load balance uh, across all the three servers, right? So that means uh, every transaction will just load balance for, uh, using the round robin algorithm, okay. round robin, right? So. If you run on single primary, that means uh, you can also still use the, the, the router. The router will basically make sure you can fail over to the to the next available server. So when when it try uh, when it try a few times fail, it will just go redirect all all the future connections into the next server. Uh, there is there is another one. What, what is it called? Uh, uh, MySQL MySQL router. You can download that and uh, try it as well. And uh, for your information as well, MySQL Router version 2.1 is uh, is going to be, it is now on RC, release candidate. So should be around another three to four weeks before it become GA. So uh, that one is, uh, 2.1 is, uh, is designed for group replication. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, conceptually, how the group replication is different from traditional MySQL cluster? Means what are the key differences? A MySQL cluster is mainly for starting and then right scale out, whereas a group replication is mainly for the higher availability. Uh, will you make sure this group replication is a synchronized one or is it still asynchronous? The releases that we have done till now is virtual synchronization. That eventually, it will be uh, synchronized. No, in my case, I am writing in a primary. Mm -hmm. Before uh, before it gets an acknowledgement from one of the nodes, that node could fail. Still, it wait for the acknowledgement from the failure node or what will happen? Uh, fully synchronization, we are working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing that we already released on 5.7.17 is eventual synchronization. It is it so is not guaranteed that you have committed here <coughs> on one more. So it's still asynchronous. Eventual synchronization. It's okay. kind of it's not hundred percent. Eventual synchronization is if a node is there on the group, it will reach to that particular state which is there on the master in some time. Like we cannot guarantee that time depends on the load. But it, if the server is up and running, it's going to reach that state after some time. Not immediately, but after some time. That's what we call it as eventual synchronization. 
So that uh, for for this, right? Um, that means when transaction comes into the let's say server one, so um, this uh, it is not going to complete. No. First, but it will wait acknowledgement to uh, when it reach majority voting, right? No. Is that um, it's actually on master transaction is prepared. It is sent to the communication system, and then from the communication system, it, it broadcasts to all the servers. So all the servers will read, receive this, and all the servers will individually check again is its local database. And once the local certification database says yes, you can go ahead and do the commit. It will do the commit. It will not see whether on other node will it be committed or not because if your local certification database says yes it is guaranteed in your group replication that on all other nodes the local certification on that node will also say the same answer for that particular transaction either yes or no okay so that uh, that means the it will this transaction will wait for the acknowledgement no it won't wait it won't wait you will just commit on the, yes. on the server one. Yes. It will commit when it comes from the communication system. It will commit when it get uh, the acknowledgement from the communication system. Not acknowledgement, those those events. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, any other questions? One last one. Yeah. The notes, right? Can we have the notes at the different uh, look? Different data centers. Is it possible? Yeah. 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 It doesn't matter where those servers are sitting. You just have to say that I want to. For this, you have to say that this is the group name. And when some server is trying to connect, you have to mention the group name. Okay. Because I was just uh, thinking about if you let's say put it at a different geographical locations. It's possible. It's still okay. Yes. But network latency will be there, yeah. so you have to think about that. But other than that, there is uh, the group replication <coughs> supports it. Are there other questions? No? Give a round of applause for Vega Pack.